Well, it's six, so we can go ahead and get started. Uh, I'll keep admitting people as they come on, but um, my name is Jordan and I'm an admissions counselor here uh, at Muskingum. I work, I work with uh, the Pulse Program and we are joined by um, pretty much the entire staff of uh, the Pulse Program and the DEO office. So I want to thank them for, uh, you know, jumping on here and answering any questions you guys might have. Um, what's going to happen is uh, we're going to have uh, a PowerPoint with you know, some details about the university and the PULSE program and the DEO office. And then after we're done, if you guys want to ask any questions in the chat, we will um, get those taken care of for you. But um, unless anybody has anything, Dr. Elkins, you can, the, the floor is yours. All right, thanks, Jordan. Um, let us know along the way if anybody can't hear or can't see the PowerPoint. Um, we're going to share a PowerPoint so that we've got some um, visual information to share with you also. Um, the chat is available to uh, put um, questions in and we will have a question and answer period um, at the end too if, if you have any questions. So it's good to see everybody. It's good to see some of you who've, who've got your cameras on. Um, just to let you know, our, this uh, Microsoft Teams system works a little bit better if you turn your camera off for right now. And when you have a question, if you want to turn your camera on, that's great to do that at that, at that point. OK, I am going to share my screen so that you can see the PowerPoint that we want to share with you. All right, is that, Jordan, can you see it okay? Yes, ma'am. It looks like I'm still spotlighted. Or am I still spotlighted? Let me get You're out good. of that. All right, so let's try this again. All right, there we go. All right, so my name is Dr. Leanne Elkins, and I'm Executive Director of Disability Resources Services at Muskingum University. And we want to share with you this evening information about the two offices on our campus that support students with documented disabilities, the PLUS program and the um, Disability Education Office. So Jordan's going to start us off with some information, general information about uh, Muskingum University. Yeah, like I said, my name is Jordan. Uh, I'm an admissions counselor at Muskingum. Uh, I work with uh, any student who's, who's interested in Pulse Program. I know the majority of the kids um, that are on here right now have uh, talked to me before, um, but this is being recorded, so we might have some juniors and younger kids um, see this. So uh, Muskingum University is located in New Concord, Ohio, which is just about an hour east of Columbus on I-70. Um, we have about 1,300 students. Um, that go to school here. So your average class size is in the 16 to 18 range. Uh, we are a liberal arts uh, institution, so there are certain classes that all students take regardless of whether they're um, a philosophy major or a nursing major. Um, we do that for two reasons. One, uh, when you become a professional in whatever you know career path you choose, we want you to be able to pull from different information banks in your brain to be able to do that job. And two, uh, like me, I went to Muskingum. I came here as an engineering major, found out math is real hard, and uh, switched to high school history. So, um, you know, that liberal arts uh, portion of education allows a buffer time to um, change your major and not lose a whole bunch of time by doing that. Uh, in terms of the admissions process, uh, the app usually will open uh, August 1st, and the application process is fairly simple. We're a member of the Common App, so um, you can apply through that. But we right now uh, we are test optional. We'll know more about whether or not if we're going to be test optional um, moving forward in the fall 22 as we kind of get closer to May. But um, if you have any questions, uh, that text number is the best way to get a hold of me. If you call that number, my office phone will ring. Um, but I'll check my um, messages on the weekend. So if you have like if you're playing Fortnite and it's 1 a.m. on Sunday and you have a question, just shoot me a text and I'll see it sometime. So um, if you have any questions, let me know. Thanks. All right, thanks, Jordan. So we also want to share with you about Muskingum University that um, we are ranked number 15 by collegeconsensus.com for our support for students with learning disabilities. 
And this really is uh, a credit to our entire campus um, because our, our faculty are very welcoming of students with learning differences. They know their students' names, they care about student success, and they really want to support individual students. So we always want to share this, uh, this wonderful ranking with prospective students so that, you know, we have a, a wonderful campus culture for students with learning differences. So as I mentioned, um, we've got two programs on our campus that support students with disabilities. The PLUS program is our unique fee-for-services program, which provides comprehensive academic support services for students with learning differences, with the goal of fostering the development of skills needed for success in college. The Disability Education Office is the office required by the Americans with Disabilities Act. Um, which provides reasonable accommodations to students with documented disabilities so that they can participate in all aspects of college life. So we're going to start with the Disability Education Office and share information with you about DEO first, and then we'll move on to the PLUS program. So hello, my name is Carissa Taylor, and I am the coordinator for the Disability Education Office. So the Disability Education Office, or as you'll often hear it referred to, is the DEO. Um, we support students with documented um, disabilities by ensuring equal access to campus programs and services. Um, students must request accommodations from the DEO by submitting documentation of their functional limitations and their need for accommodations. Um, the Disability Education Office advocates for students with, uh, with course instructors in regards to their accommodations, and we also support students in developing their self-advocacy skills by in encouraging students to advocate for themselves with their instructors as well. Next slide, please. So provided on this slide are some examples of various accommodations that students might receive through the DEO. So the DEO determines the appropriate accommodations based on the student's documentation of their disability needs and functional limitations. Each semester, the DEO notifies each student's instructors of their approved accommodations while keeping each student's disability diagnosis confidential. So as you can see on this slide, there's a picture in the corner of an actual room, which is located um, in that DEO testing center. So we, the DEO oversees testing accommodations there. Next slide. So on this slide, you can see some various types of assistive te technology that's supported by DEO. Uh, the DEO staff provides students with training for specific assistive technology, as well as access to licenses uh, for university-owned software. All Muskingum University students are provided with free access to Microsoft 365 technology, as well as university email for their use as a student. All right, so Katrina is going to share with us a little bit about the PLUS program. Hello, I'm Katrina Buchanan. And I've been with the PLUS program for 31 years, and I am the Learning Consultant Coordinator. And I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the PLUS program. The PLUS program has been here since 1983, and we provide comprehensive academic support for all kinds of students, college students who have a learning difference. These could be students who have a specific learning disability, ADHD, who may find themselves in the autism spectrum disorder, as well as other documented disabilities that do create some kind of a learning difference with the student. Our PLUS students comprise about 5% of the overall Muskingum University population. And our PLUS students, they have as much of an advantage over the 67 different course majors that any student here on the campus can have, as well as participating in different kinds of athletic events and organizations. They live in the residence hall and can also live in townhouses that is a living option here at Muskingum. Next slide, please. Our professional learning consultants, I believe, is what makes our program very unique. We all and our staff are professional degree learning consultants. Everyone holds at least a bachelor's or a master's degree, and it's all adults that provide services to your students. We customize those learning strategies for our students because we understand that they do learn differently. 
We also help the student monitoring their academic progress by checking on their grades, helping them become, become conversational with their faculty members regarding their grades as well. And with that, we do collaborate with the academic advisors, the course instructors, and we also are a link between the home environment and the student. Next slide, please. So this slide talks a little bit about the customized learning strategies that we have. On the left side, these are very much of our executive functioning strategies that the learning consultants embed in the course content with our students. Such things as time management, organization, planning and prioritizing, and helping the student manage their course materials, their syllabi, their notes, their folders. On the right side, these are more strategies that are embedded in course content. These can be things such as reviewing the course material, critical thinking, helping a student learn some note taking strategies while working with the course material that we are supporting them with, test taking and test preparation, proofreading, and of course, most important, helping the student become an active member by participating and engaging in their classroom instruction. All right, to tell you a little bit more about the PLUS program. The PLUS program um, it is a fee-for-service program and has four levels of services to meet each student's unique learning needs. So as Katrina said, students meet with professional learning consultants during regularly scheduled times, and those professional learning consultants work with the individual students' uh, needs, focus on their strengths, monitor their academic performance, um, with the, the goal of promoting executive functioning skills and self-advocacy skills. Our goal is to meet the needs of individual students. So we have designed four levels of support services in order to do that. The premier level of service is five hours a week and the select level of service is three hours per week. Both the premier and select levels of service provide content tutoring using various learning styles and focus on the development of academic strategies needed for success. The transitional level of service is one and a half hours per week and is designed for students who need support in transitioning either from high school to college or from college to life after college. Um, so many of our students who are juniors or seniors um, opt for the transitional level when they get to that point because they need less support. And finally, we have the, uh, our fourth level of service, which is brand new, and you all are the first to hear about it this evening. It was just approved this week, our connections level of service. This service is designed for students who need support with communication and social skills, whether that's communication with their professors, um, social skills with their peers, getting connected on campus, um, supporting that transition from high school to college. That's the goal of the Connections program. Um, the Connections program does not focus uh, on academics, but if a student needs support with communication and social skills as well as academics, then the Connections can be combined with the select level of service for um, six hours per week and a little and a three hundred dollar discount on the total cost of, of the support for both programs. So that, like I said, that's our, our unique service that is has been added this week and available for students beginning um, this fall semester. We also, for a reduced fee, provide support to students who are enrolled in Muskingum University summer online courses. And for those of you who are incoming first year students, there is an option for you to begin your college experience this summer online. Um, we, and we have the um, opportunity to support you through that also if, if you wish. So Melissa is going to share with you about the LEAP program. I know there's already some questions about our plans for the fall. Hello everyone, my name is Melissa Schott. I've been um, with Muskingum University as a learning consultant and a plus services coordinator for 16 years now, um, but I'm also a Muskingum alum myself, so I've um, been, uh, been with Muskingum a lot longer than that. So I just want to talk a little bit about the LEAP program, um, formerly called the Early Connection Program. It is now the LEAP program, which is Learn, Experience, adapt and prepare. This program provides a bridge for students with learning differences to experience college and support their transition from high school to college. 
Designed for new first-year students, this program provides an opportunity for students with learning differences to experience a three-credit college course during the two weeks before the fall semester begins. So our dates would be August 9th through the 20th. Um, this year, the uh, LEAP program is going to be a virtual format, um, but we are in conversation of moving in a few days early so that you can still have a chance to kind of learn the campus. There will be some peer mentors available to help with this transition, and the fee is going to be $1,000 for the two weeks. Next slide, please. So if you are thinking about being part of the PLUS program and have not been accepted, I want to take a minute to explain what those next steps would be. So after you're accepted to Muskingum University, there are some different things that you need to do to be in order to be accepted into the PLUS program. First, you need to submit disability documentation. This documentation must list what your disability is and how that impacts your education. Um, it can be any of these listed, support of a psycho educational testing, evaluation team report, individualized education program, a 504 letter from the physician, a written service plan. Some require more than one. For example, if you give us an IEP and there's no docu documented disability, we may ask for some additional information. If you give us an ETR and usually that information is all included, then we may not need anything else. So each case is a little different. It does not have to be as recent as a certain amount of years. We, we are under the um, impression that you know, your, your disability doesn't go away. So whatever you have is we will take. Um, and then after we have that disability, that documentation, then you will need to schedule an individ, individual interview. And we call this more of a conversation. It, this can happen either in person on campus or virtual if you've already visited campus. But this gives you an opportunity to kind of look for what services you as a college incoming college student may need and how our services would be the best match for you guys. So we want to kind of do a match to make sure our services are appropriate for the services that you're looking for. And no matter whether or not you are in plus or not, um, your accommodations through our disability education office are are available. And that's. All right, so now one of our former students who actually works in our office is going to share her perspective of her experience as a Muskingum student working with the Disability Education Office and the PLUS program. Thanks, Leanne. Um, hi, guys. Uh, my name is Caitlin Gooden, um, but you also might hear me be referred to as Kat. Um, a lot of faculty and staff call me um, Kat. Um, that's just what my nickname is. Um, I graduated from Muskingum in the spring of 2018, and I was an in the education program as a double major in early childhood and special education. Um, I'm excited to share with you my experience as a student who grew um, from working with the Disability Education Office to receive my accommodations and a student also in the PLUS program. Um, as Leanne, um, Dr. Elkins said, I am still here at Muskingum and I work as the Disability Resources Services Administrative Assistant. Um, I get asked all the time why I decided to come to Muskingum and I always express the number one reason was the DEO and the PLUS program, which I'll elaborate more on my next slide. Um, I have so much that I'd like to share with you. Um, my second reason why I came to Muskingum was the faculty and staff. They are there to support you in the classroom and also out in the community. Um, they know who you are by name. Um, you are not just a number in the classroom. On the quad, there are some people you're not familiar with, but I guarantee you there will be some, someone you know or will say hi to you. Um, you also, uh, with knowing who you are, um, the feeling of what we like to call the musky family will surround you with care and the love and the support you need. Once you graduate from MU, um, you become a part of the amazing Long Magenta line. Next slide, please. All right, my experience um, with the Disability Education Office and PLUS program, um, I have voiced that 
Um, I would not be who I am and where I am today without the support and guidance from them. Um, in the past, I would not have been able to discuss and share with you my experience. I was shy. I had no self-confidence. Um, today, I have gained um, how to self-advocate for myself with someone with a disability, and I could not have gained the self-confidence without the support of my family and also the DEO and PLUS program. Um, gaining the self-advocacy, um, this allows me to express my strengths, my weaknesses, how to speak up, and how to ask for assistance when it's needed. Um, having a set one-on-one -on -one time with my learning consultants allowed me to have a set routine throughout the entire semester. Um, the learning consultants also um, assisted me with setting goals for myself, getting prepared through the week by teaching me strategies using my strengths. Um, everything was individualized to fit my needs for success in the classroom, out in the community, and also beyond um, when I did graduate. There are some examples of strategies that I did not that did use my learning consultants, but there were are much more that that student could benefit from. Um, my communication skills have grown immensely um, before the DEM plus program. You can barely get two words out of me due to being shy and worrying, and thinking I will say the wrong thing. Now you can hear me from a mile away. Um, I talk to I talked to my learning consultants about gaining my confidence to speak up and they gave me the reassurance that I needed. When I was in elementary school and middle to middle and high, um, my parents were told that I would not be able to be successful in college due to my disability. While utilizing my strengths, my strategies that I have that I have, was taught, the support, the guidance, building of my self advocacy and the confidence all from the DEO and the PLUS program, I proved them all wrong. Um, I will continue to prove them wrong by all my successes and the memories and accomplishments I have had and continue to have thanks to the DEO and PLUS program. Thanks. All right, thanks, Caitlin. So um, here are links to our uh, email and our website. If you want more information, um, feel free to go to our websites for the PLUS program and the Disability Education Office, um, and, but also feel free to contact us through um, either email or phone, whichever you prefer. We would love to answer any questions that you have, and we're going to take some time now to answer any questions that you have. I'm going to unshare my screen. Does anybody have any questions at this point? You can put, drop them in the chat or feel free to turn your camera on and your microphone and ask us questions. I think we had one question in the chat about the starting of the LEAP program two weeks early. I think Melissa addressed that, that it will begin on August 9th and it will be a virtual program um, for the first week and at least part of the second week. And when we have um, in more information as to when students will be able to move to campus during the LEAP program, we will get that information out. Our goal is to send you an email with more information about the LEAP program next week. Anybody have other questions? All right, so somebody's got a question about an emotional support dog. Um, Let's see, there's one more question here about the LEAP program. Will, with the LEAP program only being virtual now, will there be able to be any focus on meeting other students? So when even though you're virtual for those for that week and a half or so, you're going to meet the other students participating in the program. Um, every summer we have about 10 students. This year we have 12 students who have expressed interest in the program. So you're going to be connecting through a system like this um, class will be in the morning. We'll take a break for lunch and then in the afternoon we'll have some small group sessions and times for you to, to connect with the peer mentors as well as you, the learning consultant that's assigned to you during the LEAP program. So you will be meeting the students through uh, the virtual system um, of LEAP. 
And then once you get to campus, you will already know those 10 or 12 students and be able to connect um, with them. So Carissa, do you wanna address the, the process to uh, get approval for an emotional support animal? Yeah, absolutely. So for emotional support animals, there's actually information that's listed on the DEO website, um, but there's pieces of information that you'll need to know. So you'll have to turn in a request to register form, which is the form that you fill out. There's a request for information. That's um, information that a medical professional fills out. Um, we'll also need up-to-date vaccinations, um, and then we'll also need uh, four pictures. More information on that, including our policy for animals on campus, is listed on our website, which is miskingham.edu slash DEO, and it's listed under the policies and procedures part of the website. And just to add one other thing about emotional support animals, because we want to make sure your animal has had all the vaccines necessary and that they are uh, mature enough to be an emotional support animal, the animal needs to be at least a one year old. So um, no, no puppies or kittens. Need, those, those dogs and cats need to be mature to, to, to fulfill, fulfill that role. Um, somebody's asking about an online course. So this summer, Muskingum University has several online courses. Um, and when, if you are a, a high school senior, incoming first year student, you're gonna sign up for Muskie Preview, um, which is our orientation and where you will get your fall schedule. Um, that's a great time to ask some of those questions about getting enrolled in a summer course online. And like I said, there is opportunity for you to work with a plus learning consultant for a reduced fee if you feel like you're gonna need support to do that. Um, there was a question, Leanne, can, can I go ahead yeah. and go ahead. Um, there was a question about a, a freshman who hasn't used Microsoft in a few years and wondering if they will get help and how to navigate the program, which is an excellent question. So part of our LEAP program, if you're going to be part of LEAP, will be help navigating that. So we do a whole session on how to get, navigate all of our um, online platforms like Blackboard and, and um, Microsoft Teams and all of those so that we can help you with that. And then if you're not in LEAP, you, um, one of your learning consultants will also help navigate, help you navigate that program. So we, we um, just spend a lot of time helping you guys do that. So somebody else asked um, about the meetings with professional learning consultants. Is there a set time each week? Yes, there is. So depending on whether you select what level you select, so Premier is five hours a week, um, Select and Connections are three hours a week, and Transitional is an hour and a half a week, you're going to have a set schedule for your specific learning consultant meetings um, and depending on what classes you are enrolled in also. Um, so you might have a two different learning consultants to meet with because you might have a, a math class and you might have um, some uh, classes that are more reading focused. Um, we tend to find that our math, our learning consultants that uh, work with math and science classes um, are specifically focused in those areas. And so then you would have a different learning consultant for your, some of your other classes. So you will have a set time that will be scheduled in between your classes. We'll make sure you've got plenty of time for lunch. Um, and our, our scheduled times end by five o'clock. So then that gives you time for dinner and anything else that you need to do in the evenings. If you're a student athlete, then we always work around scheduled practices and games. Um, but you will have, as, as Caitlin said, meeting with your learning consultants will put you into a positive routine so that you have time set aside to study and do the assignments that you need to for class. Leanne, uh, yes. real quick, um, somebody asked a question. I think Ayana asked a question about just what, what it's like living on campus and had some stuff about transfer rules. I can, I can talk yes, about that a little bit. that'd be great, Jordan. Uh, yeah. I think <laughs> no. you're the only one of us that lived on campus. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Um, so uh, I went to, I'm from uh, Fort Wayne, Indiana, which is um, not close enough to commute. So um, I lived on campus when I was a student. And the nice part about Muskingum's campus is it's fairly small, which is nice because like safety reasons because of where we're located, we don't have um, the issues with crime that you'd have um, in like Cleveland or Cincinnati or, or bigger 
um, city like that. Uh, Muskie Programming Board does a really good job of having events uh, on campus all the time. So as long as you're a student who's active in looking for those things, like when I was a student, um, I, I was a football player, I uh, was involved in Greek life, I was on Greek Council, helped out with some um, MPB stuff, helped out with Brood Awakenings. Um, I worked for the PLUS program. I was a note taker uh, for the PLUS program. Um, so as long as you're actively looking for those things, then you'll have uh, a great time. Uh, when, when we have info sessions, I tell all the kids that I talk to that the kids who are the most successful at Muskegon, whether they're in the PLUS program or not, um, are the kids who are involved in multiple different groups and organizations on campus. So as long as you're actively seeking out those things, then you shouldn't have a problem. Uh, in terms of uh, transfer stuff, most um, classes that you take in college, um, not at Muskingum, will transfer. What will happen is you'll get a transfer evaluation from the Academic Affairs Office. Um, if you guys if you guys have any issues with that, just shoot me a text or give me a call and I can talk to uh, Heather Pritchard and we can go from there. But just wanted to address those two. So thank you. All right, good. Thanks, Jordan. Um, Melissa, do you want to? There's a question here about three the three credit class during the LEAP program and um, how long it lasts. I don't, I don't know that we even mentioned what the class is. Sure. Um, so that class is a um, general education history class. It's um, U.S. History 2, 1877. So it's going to start with like Native American and different things like that. Um, it will run, so it's very intensive the first two weeks, as you imagine. It's, you know, it runs pretty much um, about three, four hours um, those first couple weeks a day. Um, and then you will be in that same group of students will be in the exact same class. So no student, no other students will get added into that. It will just be that core group of the 12 students will continue over. And then during the semester, it switches to a um, three day a week where you just come in and meet for 50 minutes. Um, it's usually a Monday, Wednesday, Friday class. And it goes to about week five. Um, and so that way when the rest of the semester is ramping up, this one kind of um, dies down and will be over. So if you are taking maybe starting out with 13 or 14 credits for the fall and then you add um, a leap into it, by the end of fall semester, you'll have earned 17 credits as long as you finish everything successfully. All right, and there's a question about when the, the fee is due for the LEAP program. I believe that's June 1st, if it, I think is what we uh, agreed on. So basically what will happen is, as Dr. Elkins says, we're gonna send out an email um, that will explain those specific details. And then we're also going to put the registration through your admissions portal. So once it'll, this email will ask you to go ahead and register. And once you register, they're gonna ask you for a at least a $100 deposit just to hold your spot. Um, and then the rest of that money, I do believe is due by the end of the fall semester. So it'll just be added right onto your bill. The only thing that you'll have to, um, worry about before LEAP starts is the $100 um, deposit that is different than any other deposits you pay to Muskingum for housing or et cetera. So please look for those emails and then you will have links to fill out registrations and stuff for that. Good, thanks. Um, so somebody asked, can you switch between, between Premier and Select mid-year? Yes, in between semesters, you can switch um, levels depending on your needs. So if you come to campus and you decide that you want the full five, five hours per week of the premier services, um, and then at the end of that semester you say, oh, I think I've got the hang of this. I, I can um, do this with less support from our learning consultant. Then you can switch mid semester um, to a, a lower level. Um, we do at the end of each academic year, we do some reviewing ourselves and we encourage students to switch because our goal is to help students learn to become independent. And so if students are doing great with Premier their first year, um, we might reach out to them and their families and suggest that they consider reducing to um, a, a, a less time with a learning consultants. 
And somebody's asking, Katrina, maybe this is one for you. Are, are students able to email learning consultants outside of meeting times if they have questions? Hi, um, typically with the use of Teams, many times students can get in contact with their learning consultants through that eight to five period of time. And I do have students who do that. If I have a student that I met with on Monday and then suddenly have a question on Tuesday, sometimes they slip me a quick message in Teams and I get back to that student when I have the availability. And yes, st students can email their learning consultants. Katrina, do you find that sometimes students are emailing you papers that you might or an assignment that you might look at? Yes, typically students email me their papers and then I go through them and then what I like to do is have the student come in with me and then we go through the paper line by line or paragraph by paragraph because that helps the student learn some strategies in order to be that really good proofreader as they move on and eventually away from plus you graduate and on to your next level. So I don't typically make all kinds of corrections and just send it back to the student. I like the student to learn the process of beginning to proof their own papers. Good, thanks. So Kat, I think we've got one here for you. Um, somebody's asked, do we have social events with the PLUS program? Yes, we do have social events with the PLUS program. Um, we like to try to have them um, once or twice a month, um, but it's been a little bit challenging this semester just because of COVID and everything, but we do try to have those. And we send out an email to students letting them know about these social events. Um, we the learning consultants also remind um, the students. We also have two whiteboards in our lobby um, that we post different events going not just with plus, but also outside of camp um, outside of the plus program and DEO of social events through MU. Um, and we try to keep that very updated so um, you guys know what is going on um, with the DEO and plus, but also um, through the entire MU community. Um, so we try to have those as much as po as much as possible. Um, we also put that on our social media. We have a, uh, our social media pages. We have Twitter, social, um, Instagram, and Facebook. Um, so you can look us up on there, and we try to keep that up to date. Uh, post our social events, um, important dates that are coming up. Um, so check that out. And we'd love for everybody to join our social media. I think it's. Uh, they're all called DEO and plus or Muskingum DEO and plus or MU DEO and plus if you want to search Instagram, Facebook or Twitter and um, join us to see what all we've got going on. Anybody have other questions? Jordan, anything else we need to share from an admissions perspective? Um, I'm trying to think. I know that uh, Muskie preview dates are filling up uh, rather quickly. I know that there are a handful of kids on here right now who have paid their deposit and registered for Muskie preview, and I think they start on Thursday of this week, which is just wild to think this this year has gone that fast, but. Um, if you uh, want to commit to Muskingum, um, paying your $200 admission, admission deposit allows you to um, secure your spot in the class. Uh, this year, we're about um, 100 deposits ahead of where we were last year. So we're <clears throat> expecting those 400 or so slots to fill up pretty quickly. But uh, as long as you have your deposit paid by uh, May 1st, um, it's a pretty easy process to get that. Uh, handled if you want to pay your deposit after may 1st for whatever reason just let me know and we can uh, work through those things but that's the next big date for us is must be preview good thanks jordan can mm -hmm. i pity, piggyback yeah. a little bit about yeah. musky preview um something that will happen at musky preview is um if you have been accepted as a plus accept so that means we have your documentation we have your um interview and that you've already been accepted um, a member of our plus program will actually write that first semester schedule for you um, so that way we can look at your interest and get you a good schedule coming into the fall that knows what it may be like to have um, a learning difference and how to how to manage that so if you haven't been accepted because you're missing 
one piece or another piece, there's a chance that um, PLUS will not write your schedule. So if you want that um, a little with help with that, um, then go ahead and send up your documentation so we can get you accepted. Yeah, I think there's a few students on here who we are still in need of some pieces of documentation from. So if you're not sure, if you um, have not yet been accepted to work with the PLUS program for the fall semester, then um, please reach out to us so that we can um, let you know what you are missing. PLUS does share documentation with DEO. So once you have submitted your documentation to PLUS, then Carissa will have access um, to that documentation to uh, evaluate the accommodations that, you, that are, you're eligible to receive. So if PLUS doesn't have your documentation, DEO doesn't either. And so then you, you won't be able to get those accommodations. So if you are, um, if you're not accepted with PLUS yet and are very interested in PLUS, or if you've decided you're not interested in PLUS, but you want accommodations through DEO, either way, we still um, will need your documentation to make those things happen. Okay, um, we've got a question about why it was um, the LEAP program decided to, on being virtual this year when we've all been on campus all this time um, in class. And that's a great question because we have been, Muskingum University is very fortunate that our community of students and faculty and staff have um, done a great job trying to stay safe and healthy and using lots of hand sanitizer and masks all the time. Um, so that we are, um, we've been able to be in person in classes this this whole academic year. Um, I, the, the really the biggest decision for August is that um, in the past other organizations were also on campus early. The football team was coming early. Other athletic teams were coming to campus early, and the decision has been made that they won't be on campus early either. Um, so we'll have the opportunity to have our students come to campus a few days early. Uh, but unfortunately, the entire two week time period is, is, is not an option. And part of that, too, is um, there's a lot of maintenance kinds of issues that happen over the summer, a lot of um, painting and um, improvements that are done to campus. And so um, the university takes it very seriously to have um, things sanitized and cleaned and ready for students. And so it, it, it makes it a little bit easier if everybody's here. Um, almost at the same time. The residence hall staff will be doing some training, but they they will not be back two weeks early either. So um, we're gonna do our best to have the LEAP program students come back a few days early to learn campus and get settled into their residence hall room. Um, but the good thing about doing the virtual component of, East, of the LEAP program is that you will become very proficient in this Microsoft Teams that we're using now, as well as Blackboard, which is the university's learning management system, um, and, and uh, any other uh, components of technology that you're going to need um, when you're a student. So we found that our students this past August um, were very proficient in the technology and it was really beneficial for them when the semester started that they knew how to use all the technology and some of their peers were still getting used to um, some of the technology. So there's some definitely some advantages to still being uh, virtual. Other questions that we can answer for you? Carissa, anything else you want to add about documentation and meeting with students about their accommodations? Maybe um, a little bit about what the process is that students will do with you in order to, to um, find out what their accommodations are for the fall? Sure. So um, I recommend sending documentation um, to the DEO before, um, but during the month of August, what we'll do is all students who are registered at Muskingum who have indicated um, that they are um, in, registered with PLUS um, or that they have reached out to the Disability Education Office saying that they would like accommodations, will receive an email letting them know that um, an appointment will need to be made 
basic with me so that way we can go over your documentation go over all of the accommodations um, we'll kind of go over more detail about the differences between high school accommodations and accommodations here at Muskingum um, and we'll kind of talk about those exact procedures and what you need to know about getting your accommodations throughout the school year but information will come um, over the summer and then those appointments are made in August before the first class before the first day of classes. All right, thanks, Carissa. Any other questions? Or anything else the staff would like to add that we haven't had a chance to talk about yet? Jordan, anything else on your end? No, ma'am. All right, well, it's about 645 and we appreciate your time this evening, um, your attention and your interest. Leanne, we just had a question come in. Oh, OK. What is the cost for supplemental tutoring over the summer? Um, that is a great question. It is based on the length of your summer class. So we have classes that are five weeks long and 10 weeks long. Um, and so it's based on that amount. Um, Hollander, how about I email you a specific amount um, tomorrow because I do not have that amount in front of me right now. Um, I have it if it's the same from last. OK, it is um, a five week course is three hundred and seventy five dollars for three hours of tutoring per week um, um, for a total of 15 hours throughout the five weeks. Um, Ten week courses is seven hundred and fifty. Um, because uh, again, that is twice the amount because it's the course is twice as long. So it's over a total of 30 hours because you still get the three hours of tutoring per week. Great. Thanks, Melissa. All right. Anything else that we're that we've missed or any other questions that folks have? All right, well, we greatly appreciate your time tonight, your interest in the PLUS program and the Disability Education Office. Like I said, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us in, in our offices or um, Jordan is your admissions counselor, so feel free to reach out to him. Um, and we look forward to seeing everybody either this fall or in future fall semesters um, and have a good rest of your evening. And um, and like I said, let us know if you've got any any questions. Take care, folks.